G'day everyone, Dean here with another Photoshop tutorial for you. And today I want to talk about um, sharpening our images. So I want to go through when to sharpen them, um, how to sharpen them, and more importantly, how much to sharpen. So how much sharpening do we apply to the image? Okay, so let's um, jump in and get started. So let's start with the when. When do we apply sharpening to an image? So it's really important that we apply the sharpening at the very end of, of our editing process. And the reason behind this is mainly to do with contrast. So if you're adding any, any form of contrast to your image, it will be um, applying a small amount of sharpening or will, will make the image appear a little bit sharper because that's what contrast does. And um, in, in, in effect, when we are actually sharpening, when we apply any, any of the um, different sharpening tools in Photoshop, all it is doing is adding contrast to the edges of um, your image. So that's really important that um, we make sure that we process our image, we do the full editing, uh, we, we finish editing, and then we will apply sharpening right at the very end. Okay, so that's the easy bit. The, the harder bit is the actual sharpening and how much do we apply, uh, which is the best way to sharpen in Photoshop. There's many different ways. There's um, Smart Sharpen, Unsharp, Mask, um, High Pass Filter, and then there's a couple of just sort of one hit um, sharpen edges or sharpen more features in Photoshop as well. So I've always found uh, high pass filter is the, is the easiest way to sharpen. It's just less confusing. You've just got one number to worry about. Whereas unsharp mask, you've got three different sliders. So, you know, you've got to work out the amount, the radius, the threshold. Um, and then in smart sharpen, as much as it does a great job, um, you know, all up there's nine different sliders that we can play with. So they can all get a little bit confusing. And um, so my choice for sharpening has always been the high pass filter. So that's what I'm gonna show you um, next in Photoshop. And of course, show you how much to apply. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so I've got a file open here. This is what I refer to as a master file. So I've taken a raw file and I've then applied my editing process to it. And, uh, and now I need to apply some sharpening. So this is a full size image. I'm not working on a, a cut down or a smaller version of the original. This is the, the full size that it's come off the camera. Now, so when I edit, um, I end up with these layers. I use adjustment layers as my editing process. So if you work in the same way or if you have any layers um, happening here and you want to apply sharpening, we need to stamp a, a visible layer above that. So to do that, um, it's quite easy on a Mac, it's Shift Option Command E. And so that will then stamp all of these layers um, into this layer above here. And we can now apply the sharpening to that layer. Um, the shortcut for that on a PC is Shift Alt Control E. Now, if you don't have layers, I've just got another copy over here, I'll just open this other version here. If you've just got a background layer, then what you need to do is simply duplicate it. So to do that, we can come up here to layer and then duplicate layer here, and that will duplicate it. Now I'll just show you something that's a bit odd here with Photoshop. Um, so whenever we have a shortcut for, a, for a, an action, um, it'll be over on the side here, it'll tell us what the shortcut is. But you can see here, duplicate layer, it's not telling me that there's any shortcut yet. There actually is a shortcut. So I'll just come out of here. So this shortcut on a, on a Mac, it's just Command J, and then that will um, duplicate this layer and place it above. And then on a PC, that's Control J. So a nice, quick, easy way of duplicating your layer. Okay, once we have that layer in place, we can then add um, the sharpening to it. And as I said before, I'm going to use a high pass filter. So we come up the top here to filter, just click on that and come down to other. And then it's sitting there, the second one down high pass. 
what this does is it sort of adds an embossing to the image. So it will bring up this window here and the only we only have one adjustment and that's this number here. Now what you want to do is just enlarge your image a little bit and, so, and, and move around to an area where there is a detail. So the other thing is we want to be applying the sharpening or we want to be um, critical of the amount of sharpening that gets applied to the areas of detail. And this particular image, um, it's all about the foreground, so it's this foreground area that we're going to be concerned with. So to move around this image, you can do it within the box, um, but I find it easier just if you hold the space bar down, you can then sort of move the image to, to where you want it. My computer's a little bit laggy too. So what we're looking for is these edges to appear along here. And what this will do is wherever we see this embossing or this edging is where the sharpening will apply. Now, as I said, the only adjustment we have is this number here. And so this number here will vary greatly depending on the, the size of your file. Um, I'll just turn that down. If I just applied that at, say, 1.0, you'll see now that that embossing has got quite soft and we're only just starting to see it. If I go to something a bit more extreme like 10, you'll notice that it's, that it's very, very strong. So for my particular camera, I'm shooting on a Fuji X-T3, which is roughly about a 26 megapixel camera. I find um, that 2.4 is my go-to start with number. And I don't normally go above that. And sometimes I'll go a little bit below it. So what you need to do is you need to just um, get used to this amount of embossing and then that will sort of guide you as to um, what number you need here. And as I said, it's, it varies a lot. So if this was, um, so far I was putting on this, this picture on the web and it was only 600 pixels by 800 pixels, then I'd find that number might be down around sort of 0 0.5. It's going to be a hell of a lot lower. And then the same again, if I'd shot this on a you know, 100 megapixel GFX Fuji, then this number may be up around sort of four to five. Um, but as I said, I've found that uh, for my files and the camera and lenses that I'm using, I find that 2.4 is pretty well spot on for most things. So we just go OK. And then, so that's now applied that high pass filter to this layer. And what we need to do now is we need to change the, the blending mode. So we just come up here and we have an option of two different ones. We have overlay or soft light. And soft light is a little bit softer and overlay is a little bit stronger. So I'll pick overlay. And now what I'll do is um, we'll just try and find an area, say down here, if I turn that layer on and off, you just see, so that's off there and now on and off, on. So you'll see it's just starting to kick up a little bit and it's just applied a very small amount of sharpening. And that is all you need. You only just need to be able to see it. Um, and any more than that, and then you're going to be starting to over sharpen and that can sort of introduce halos and all sorts of things. So we'll just have a look at that sharpening in this area back here. I'll just turn that off and on. Okay, and off and on. And the beauty with this is that um, with that embossing, then what it does is it only really picks up the edges and applies it to where there are edges. So when we have skies, because these are all smooth, there's no one or very little embossing there. There is some, and it will apply some sharpening to the sky, but it's very, very minimal. So what can happen with other, um, other ways of sharpening, like unsharp mask, is if we apply a lot of sharpening, it tends to apply too much up into the sky area uh, where we don't actually need it. So high pass filter is fantastic for just picking out the edges, um, applying the sharpening, and then it's only going to apply sharpening to the areas that we really want. And then we have 
a couple of ways of controlling it. As I said, I've used overlay there. If I found that that was a little bit too much, then I can switch that to soft light and that'll soften off a little bit. And then I've still got more control here with the opacity of that layer. So if I found still again that that was a little bit too much, then I can drop the opacity of the layer back to, to wherever I feel is right. Okay, so let me just show you, um, I've got another version over here where I've applied um, sharpening at, at 6.0. So yeah, this is where you've got to be careful too, because looking at it here, it can look quite fine, but we'll just zoom in. And if I turn that sharpening off, you see how much, how much that has affected it. And... Uh, yeah, that's way, way too much. I'll just come down into this lower area so you can see it. So you may think it looks okay, but it is way, way too much. When you're turning this high pass filter on and off, you only just want to be able to see a difference. It should just give it that little bit of sharpening and not too much. Because don't forget, we're not actually like um, sharpening a blurry image, we're just applying a very small amount of sharpening on top of our, um, our file to just sort of crispen it up a little bit. Yeah, so 6.0 is way too much. And if you have an image that has, uh, has some edges on it, we'll see whether it's affected this edge here, and it can create haloing along these edges as well if we apply too much sharpening. You can just yeah, you can just see it starting to creep in there, that little white edge. Okay, so there you go. That is um, that's how I sharpen images. That is how much I give them, and I just give my master file that small amount of sharpening, and then I find that that is ideal. Then, if I need to take that file and print it, I can print it um, up to its native resolution. If I print anything smaller, then it's fine. It won't need any sharpening. If I downsize it for the web, then it is going to be fine. It won't need any sharpening. The only time I will apply more sharpening would be, um, say, if I increased it way up to like a 30 by 40. So these, these files come off my camera. I think they're about 13 inch by 20 inch. So if I doubled that in size up to a 40 inch print, then I would probably go through that process again and apply just a little bit more sharpening to the file. Okay, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, give us a thumbs up if you did. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao.